A little while back, I made a video regarding Peter Zihan, a global analyst, and I went through some analysis of some things that I disagreed with in terms of what he said, and a whole bunch of Peter Zihan supporters lost their minds and insulted me personally and made a bunch of arguments that didn't make sense for the most part, and in this video, I'm going to respond to every one of those arguments, arguments <laughs> that they made. You'll find that these actually, most of these arguments are actually not arguments, they're just reactions and emotional reactions. But it's interesting because whenever I make a video, for example, saying negative things about Donald Trump, I assume that I'm gonna get hordes of angry Trump supporters freaking out in the comments, and that never happens, which is interesting. When I made a video recently about Andrew Tate, I figured I'd get a whole bunch of Andrew Tate supporters coming down out of the woodwork and screaming their head off, and that didn't happen. But when I made a, <laughs> a video about Peter Zihan, my goodness! Peter Zihan has a lot of guys who worship him and just think he's the shit, and I like him too, as I said in the video, and it's just fascinating to me, and it's also kind of impressive in terms of Peter Zihan's ability to create a personal brand and to gain a rabid following like that. I'm actually kind of impressed with what Peter Zihan has done in terms of building a fan base that just worship this guy and think that he's perfect. It's amazing. Actually, I do know why that happened. By the way, I'm gonna be doing various updates throughout this video because since I first recorded that original version of that video, we got a lot more traffic and a lot more comments on that original Peter Zihan video, so throughout this video, I'll be sprinkling in these updates. I'm actually not in Dubai anymore. I'm in Guadalajara, Mexico. I travel the world. That's one of the reasons I have expertise in these things. But anyway, the reason that so many people would click a Peter Zihan video and would not perhaps click a video talking about Andrew Tate or Donald Trump is because Andrew Tate and Donald Trump are gigantic worldwide names. So if you're a big Donald Trump supporter or Andrew Tate supporter, you are seeing videos about Donald Trump and Andrew Tate, including negative videos, all the goddamn time, right? So you're not gonna click on all of them because you see them all over the place. But if you see a video like the one I did, criticizing Peter Zihan, who I think is a very smart guy and a very good guy, and you're a Z big Zihan supporter, then holy shit, you're gonna click that son of a bitch, and you're gonna watch that son of a bitch, and if anyone says anything negative about your god, Peter Zihan, who can't be wrong about anything, Peter Zihan, who I think is a very smart guy and a very good person, then you're gonna vomit all over the comments about how that guy must be a clown and must not know anything. So anyway, that explains why. It's that Peter Zihan has a moderate size audience, not a massive size audience. Very interesting, and that video has really taught me a lot of techniques that I'm gonna use in the future to get more subscribers, because that's why I'm here, to get more subscribers, but I'll talk about that in a minute. And that's not a sideways attack against Peter Zihan. As I said in the video, and I'll say it again, I think Peter Zihan is a very intelligent guy. He's made a lot of really good observations, many of which I agree with. He's made many predictions that turned out correct, and I think he's a good person. And it's an issue of the same deal when I talk about people like Jordan Peterson, where I think Jordan Peterson is perfectly fine, but his followers, my God, they lose their minds, they say all kinds of crazy shit. And maybe Peter Zihan's in that same scenario where he's in one category and his followers are in a different category. But regardless, what happened is what happens often on the internet is people saw the thumbnail of the video, Zihan supporters and people who think Zihan is the shit and they clicked on it, they watched it, and they had no idea who I was and they just left a comment not knowing who I was, international entrepreneur, international business consultant, over 25 years of experiences, businesses all over the world, investments all over the world, legal residency in six different countries, and so on and so on and so forth. They had no idea of any of that. They just made a comment as if I was some random dumbass on the internet who didn't know anything. As I've said many times in the past, one of the dumbest things that people on the internet do is they make hater comments or, <laughs> or sideways hater comments on people's content when they don't even know who that person is. And I've given many examples of that in the past, not just people like me, but other people on the internet, where these people who make these comments end up looking really stupid because they don't know who they're talking to. I have never done this. I have never left a comment, a negative comment, on anyone's content without fully understanding who that person is and where that person is coming from because I don't wanna look stupid and waste my time. Moreover, and I've said this before too, and many of you who follow my content for the last 10, 15 years know this, I have never made an ad hominem personal attack against any other individual on the internet who was not a worldwide famous figure. Like, I've said negative things about Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama, like just general terms like these assholes, things like that, but I have never made an ad hominem attack against anyone on the entire internet, and if you don't believe me, you can go back and look through all my blogs, thousands of blog articles, many hundreds of thousands of comments, and you can see I've never done this. Because I'm an adult, and I like to have adult conversations with other people. And more importantly, I don't need to make personal attacks because I make constructed factual arguments. When you have constructed factual arguments, you don't need to make personal attacks. 
And I've talked about many times where whenever I see a debate on the internet between two people and someone makes a point, the other person makes a point, this person makes a point, and then this person makes a personal attack, I immediately assume that this person is just one because this person has run out of arguments to make, so all they have left is personal attacks about the guy's physical appearance or the way they talk or something else. However, numerous Peter Zihan supporters in the comments in that last video called me all kinds of names. I was called a whack job, I was called an idiot, I was called a clown, I was called a moron. I had various people say that because I have swords in my video, that therefore means I know nothing. I love these objective, rational, fact-based arguments. <laughs> I also had a few people say that, well, I teach dating advice, therefore I must know nothing about anything else. Uh, again, the dangers of leaving comments on someone's content when you have no idea who that person is. Teaching dating advice is my side gig and always has been. My primary source of income over the past 25 years is that I am an international business consultant, primarily with productivity and strategic planning. I have worked with literally hundreds of companies all over the world in at least 20 different countries. I've been doing that for 25 years. I have made literally millions and millions of dollars doing this. On top of that, this business here that you're watching this video under, Sovereign CEO, where I teach people how to set up location independent companies and internationalize their life, this business, makes approximately 11x what my dating advice makes. And if you don't believe, you can ask anyone on my staff, that's how this works. So once again, not really relevant to my level of expertise or what I know or don't know because I have a small side business teaching dating advice. Or you're just looking for another reason to launch another ad hominem personal attack against me because you don't want to respond to the actual arguments I made in the last video. And if you are a third party observer, what do you think that indicates to you? Again, whenever you see ad hominem attacks against someone, what the person is saying when they make an ad hominem attack is, I can't respond to any of your points factually or objectively, so instead I'm gonna distract the conversation and talk about you personally. And again, whenever I see that on the internet where two people are disagreeing, and I see one person go ad hominem, the other person in my mind has sort of won. And again, if you're a third party objective observer, what does that tell you? So just in case you are a Peter Zihan supporter and you have no idea who I am, and at the end of this video, you compelled to make a hater comment, let me explain the rules that I follow in terms of my social media. And these are the same rules that I've followed for the past 15 years. I've been an internet content provider for about 15 years now. I've always followed these rules. And the rules are, if you disagree with me, that's good. Those are my favorite comments. My favorite comments are people who disagree with me. But if you make an ad hominem personal attack, I have to remove the comment. Either we delete it or we shadow ban it, which means if you didn't know, you can see your comment, but no one else can other than you. Now, I'd rather not do that because I'm outcome independent. I don't care what people think, but I know as a professional blogger with over a decade of experience, when you allow personal attacks, what happens with the conversation in the comments is the conversation becomes about the personal attacks and not about the topic of the actual content. It derails and detracts the entire conversation. So unfortunately, I am forced to when people make personal attacks, delete the comments or shadow ban the comments. And if you think that is something recent that I just did with that video, I have been doing that for literally 15 years. And if you want more detail on the rules that I follow, I follow a very specific structure for these things. You can go to alphamale20.com slash rules. And those are the rules I follow for all the comments on all of my content, blogs, videos, Facebook, Instagram, it doesn't matter what it is. And this is the consistent set of rules I have followed for over 10, 15 years. This is absolutely nothing new. I'm a free speech absolutist. I think YouTube should never ban or cancel anyone for any reason, but on individual channels, people have to have the right and the authority to manage their own comments because if you don't, it'll be taken over by trolls or taken over by bots. And unfortunately, it's the nature of the internet. You have to be able to moderate these things. So if you make a hater comment in this video, please do. Please feel free to do that. Just be aware that it will either be deleted or only you will see it and no one else. You will be screaming into an empty room. Now, if you disagree with me, please do let me know in the comments and I will be more than happy to respond to you. And if you look at the original Peter Zihan video, I responded to the vast majority of the disagreeing comments, including people who were making snide attacks, including people who clearly didn't know who I was, because I like to engage in people who disagree with me as long as you engage in arguments and facts and not name calling like we're in kindergarten. By the way, side point on that, those of you who are internet content providers or want to be an internet content provider and you're worried about haters, at some point what I'll probably do is do a full deep dive video on haters and how they work and how they make you money. But as an example for this, 
This last video I did about Peter Zihan, where a whole bunch of Peter Zihan supporters came in and called me an idiot and called me a clown and said I didn't know what I was talking about and made a bunch of personal attacks about various other things and a bunch of people disliked the video. That Peter Zihan video, I gained more new subscribers to my YouTube channel from that video than any other organic video I have ever done on YouTube in my entire life. So just be aware of the fact that even people get upset with you and even attack you personally, that's good because you make money and you gain traffic and you gain customers from that. And I'll talk more about that as we go along because that's one of the comments and one of the points that many of these Peter Zihan supporters brought up. Update to that, as of the recording of this update, I have gotten more subscribers from that one video where everyone is calling me a clown and everyone was disliking the video, I got more subscribers on that one video than I do in a typical entire month of organic videos. And I'm doing two to three organic videos a week, so that's a lot of followers, so thank you very much. All right, with that out of the way, let me get to all the arguments, arguments, I should say responses, that many Peter Zihan supporters made in the last video and my response to each and every one of them. I will go through each one, all of them right now. The first response was when I said that Peter Zihan was biased because the reason he publishes his books is to get large, entrenched international corporations to hire his consulting firm and therefore they wanna hear certain things. When I said he had that bias, a lot of commenters said, well, Caleb, you have bias too. You have bias too. Let me explain that. Yes, I have a political bias. I don't have a financial bias and I talked about why I didn't have a financial bias in that video. Yes, I have a strong political bias. I am a minarchist libertarian. However, more importantly, it's not that it's political versus financial. It's that you know what my bias is because I've told you. I have come out and told the public maybe 5,000 times over the past 15 years what my bias is. My bias is a political one. I am a minarchist libertarian. I'm not an anarchist. I'm a minarchist. I'm for very, very tiny, tiny government. Not zero government, but very small government. And I say that to you, and then I say with that context, here is now my opinion and my analysis. I give you the full context so you can make a full decision on whether to listen to me or not. Peter Zihan does not do this. Have you ever said in your life, and if, you, and if he has said this to be fair, please link to the video and let me see it. Because maybe he has done this and I haven't seen it. I don't think he's done this. But have you ever seen Peter Zihan who I think is a good person and a smart guy. Have you ever seen him say in any interview or podcast, hey, look, before I answer that question about where I think America's going, I wanna let you know, my bias is I publish a bunch of books and I sell a bunch of books, and the reason I sell those books is because I want big, giant, entrenched American corporations to hire my consulting firm. So that's the bias I have. Now with that context, let me tell you how I feel about the future of America and the future of China. Have you ever seen him do that in your entire life? Because I haven't, and that's the problem, I don't hide my biases, I put them out there for the world to see so you can make a full evaluation of my content. He does not do that. And to be fair, most people don't do this. I have talked about this before when I talk about economists. There's several different types of economists. There are socialists, communists, Keynesians, Austrians, and monetarists, right? And the problem with these economists is that they don't come out and state their biases before they give their analysis. You don't see a Keynesian say when he writes a big article in the New York Times, hey, I'm about to give you my analysis of the national debt. But before I do that, I wanna make it clear, I am a Keynesian. I think that massive, massive government growth in certain areas is really good for the economy and is really good for the health of the country. That is what I believe. Now at that context, let me tell you what I think about the deficit. They don't do this. They hide their biases and pretend that they're neutral and completely objective observers and then give you that analysis based on that, which is not 100% accurate. By the way, side point, one of the reasons I'm a libertarian is because I have noticed that the economists who are most likely to disclose their bias are the Austrian economists, the libertarian economists. They're very proud about their bias and they say it right up front, whereas the other people, the monetarists, the Keynesians, the socialists, the communists, for the most part, don't ever bring that up. I think Richard Wolff is the only one, good for him. He, he says right off the bat that he's a Marxist and a socialist, great, okay, good for him. But that's unusual, not typically the case. Because Peter Zihan has not disclosed his bias, there were many people who are watching this video or who watched the last Peter Zihan video I did who followed Peter Zihan's content and didn't have any idea he had that bias. And that's a problem. I don't care how much you love Peter Zihan or worship him or think he's a genius, you have to admit if you're thinking rationally and logically and objectively, that's some kind of problem, right? Shouldn't you have that context? to put it in context so you can evaluate for yourself if you find his analysis accurate. 
The answer is yes. I do it, why can't he do it? That'd be fair again, he's not the only one, but that doesn't matter, not an excuse. The next response that I saw in those comments is various people, and I was shocked at the number of people who actually said this and actually meant it. This is one of the more depressing ones. The argument was basically this. Hey, Caleb, Peter Zihan is an expert. He's an expert. He went to college. He has all the data. He has all the spreadsheets. He has an entire team of researchers working with him. He's been doing this for decades. He's the expert. How dare you question the expert? For you, some random dickhead on the internet, to question this expert is either stupidity or the height of arrogance at the best. As if experts are never wrong. Are you kidding? We just came off of a pandemic where all of the experts with all of the resources and all of the researchers and all of the data and all of the spreadsheets were wrong and they were wrong over and over and over and over and over again about five or six or seven different things. It's not like this happened 20 years ago and you guys forgot, we just went through this. And for you to just have gone through this and immediately say, don't question the experts, <laughs> Do you even see how brainwashed you are? The reason you can question people like this, people like Peter Zihan, who I agree is an expert and a smart guy and a good guy, is because experts in geopolitics have been wrong throughout my entire adult lifetime. Over the last 25, 30 years, they were totally wrong about China. They were totally wrong about Japan. They were totally wrong about Eastern Europe. They were totally wrong about Russia. They were totally wrong about the war in Iraq and on and on and on and on. Just in the area of physical fitness and health and nutrition, experts are wrong all the goddamn time. And it is so sad, it is so depressing to see otherwise intelligent people go on the internet and say, how dare you question the expert? Experts aren't ever wrong. I'm shocked, that is one of the worst responses, probably the worst of all the responses. At least the guys calling me names are having some fun. But these guys saying, how dare you question the experts who clearly after the last pandemic were completely right about everything because they had all the data and all the resources and all the researchers. Experts can and often are wrong. Does that mean they're stupid? No, it means they're wrong because they're looking at the wrong things. They're focusing on the wrong set of facts. They have biases. There's all kinds of reasons why experts can and often are wrong. And so next time you ever have the thought, he shouldn't question the expert, you need to stop right there and do a gut check and look at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself if you're thinking rationally. I'm not kidding, it was frightening to see the number of guys in that comment section say, hey, he's the expert. How can you question an expert? The next argument or response I should say that these guys made is, yes, he has a bias, but I don't think that's a problem. And that's it, <laughs> okay? Or yeah, he has financial motivations to say what he says, but so what? Okay, that's not an argument. I'm sorry, that's just not an argument. That is an emotional knee-jerk reaction. If you wanna construct an argument, please do so. That's not an argument. The next response was, guy said, well, just because he has financial motivations to say what he says, doesn't mean he's wrong. Correct, that one aspect doesn't mean he's wrong or right but it's something you need to know. It's important for you to know. Just like if you knew my bias or didn't know my bias, that wouldn't make me wrong either, right? Right, so that again doesn't matter. Of course it doesn't make him right or wrong, but you need to know. By the way, I do three videos here a week on how to build location independent income, move to a less bad country, or at least set up an international backup plan and do all these things for very little money. So if that's of any interest to you, you should subscribe to this channel, click the notification bell, leave a like on this video, and leave a comment on this video. Doesn't really matter what you say, even if it's a personal attack, I don't care. That way you'll get this content for free in the future. The next response that many Zihan supporters said in the last video was that I was making a straw man argument. And the vast majority of them, and you can go look at the comments and see for yourself, the vast majority of these guys said, you're making a straw man argument, and then they ran away. And I would ask them, what do you mean? And they wouldn't respond. So what does that tell you? So I had to kind of interpret and guess what they were talking about when they said straw man, because none of them said why it was a straw man. That should tell you right there, there's something wrong with these arguments when you just say straw man and then you run away and not clear about what you're saying, right, right? But anyway, my guess was, I think what they were referring to was the fact that I said in the last video that Peter Zihan said that France, Argentina, and Japan would become, quote, superpowers. 
I should not have used the term superpower. The reason I use that term is because he wrote a book called The Accidental Superpower, so that term was in my head. That was my error, and I apologize for that error. However, none of my arguments change. Just change what I said to France, Argentina, and Japan will do just fine for the long-term future. And my arguments are the same. These countries will not do fine. Argentina is an exception because it goes up and down and up and down. France will not do fine. I will cover France in a minute. Japan will not do fine. I'm sorry. So if you didn't like the one word I said, the word superpower in that video, then okay, I apologize for that one mistake. Other than that, I was not making a straw man argument. He has said numerous times, France, Argentina, Japan, and several other countries are going to do just fine going forward as the rest of the world collapses around them. Okay. Next response was that some guy said, I clearly have not read any of Peter Zihan's books. Incorrect, I read The Accidental Superpower. I actually enjoyed it, I learned a lot, didn't agree with a lot of it, agree with some of it. Again, this goes back to how stupid you look when you leave a hater comment or a disagreeing comment on someone's content talking about that person individually when you have no idea who that person is. The next response was about France. And in, a lot of people brought up France, and here's what they said in a summary. France will do just fine, much better than Germany, because of nuclear power and farmland. And demographics, I gotta throw that in there because if I don't include that, they'll get angry. Nuclear power, farmland, and demographics. Now that doesn't change my point, but yes, demographics too. That's the argument, okay, boy. Three responses to that. Number one, top of the list. I did not say in the video, and I have never said anywhere, that France was just as worse off as Germany. There are numerous comments in that thread in that other video that reacted as if I had said, France is just as screwed as Germany. No, I have said numerous, numerous, numerous times over the past, I would say six years, that Germany is absolutely fucked. Germany is probably the worst off country in all of Western Europe. Germany is going to collapse very soon. Yes. Yes, yes. I have also said, although not as loudly, France is not nearly as bad off as Germany. That is correct. France has some factors that are going for it very well that Germany doesn't have. I also said that France is going to collapse too. We'll cover that in a second. But yes, Germany is much worse off than France, but just because Germany is worse off than France doesn't mean France is gonna do just fine. No, it's a little more complicated than that. Second response, nuclear power and farmland. But because of nuclear power and farmland, France is gonna do just fine. Now note that I said that all of Europe is going to collapse, not just Germany. A few people in that comment section in the original video, when I said, how is France gonna do just fine because of farmland and demographics and nuclear power plants, when the entire rest of Europe is going to collapse all around them? Please explain that. And some guys twisted that and said, well, they'll do fine when Germany collapses. That's not my argument. My argument is not that Germany will collapse and then every other country in Europe will do just fine. No, Europe is gonna collapse in general, the vast majority of it. You think the UK is gonna do just fine? You think Spain is gonna do just fine? No, all these countries surrounding France are gonna collapse. And so again, and I will listen to you in the comments, tell me how when all of Europe has collapsed, and France is by itself with demographics and farmland and nuclear power plants, how France is gonna do just fine. Pencil that out for me and explain to me exactly how that's going to work. Because when I asked that in the last comment section of the last video, not one of you Saihan supporters responded to that. Let's see if you can do that this time. And again, if you're a third party observer, watch the comments and see if anyone actually answers that with actual real arguments. Because if you answer that with real arguments, I will respond. And hey, Maybe you can change my mind. There have been times where the audience has changed my mind and proven me wrong and I've changed my mind based on the facts and the data and objective arguments, not name calling, not dodging the question and not running away. So if you really think that France is gonna do fantastically because of demographics and nuclear power plants when the entire rest of Europe is gonna collapse all around them, wonderful, tell me in the comments exactly how. And if no one tells me that in the comments, you third party observers can make your own decisions as to what you think that means. I don't know why some people on the internet think that one or two factors decides a country's growth or collapse. It's a lot more complicated than that. You can't just point at two things and say that country will do well because of nuclear power and farmlands or farmlands and natural resources. You know what other country has fantastic farmland and great natural resources? Venezuela. How's Venezuela doing? They're doing terrible, right? Because there's more factors involved than just those two things. You could, for example, like in Venezuela, have a bunch of morons running your country, like France. 
So there's more factors involved instead of just nuclear power and farmland. Are those benefits to France? Yes. Do those indicate that France will do less badly than Germany? Yes, of course. But you can't point at those two factors and say France is gonna do just fine, Caleb, you're an idiot. Sorry, things are a lot more complicated than that, which is what I tried to explain in the video, especially regarding the fact that there's interactivity between countries and free trade and resources and a lot of other things that I covered in the last video. Third response, and this is the biggest one of all. I said in the video, how is France going to prosper when the rest of the European countries around it will collapse? How does that work? How does France do great when all the countries around it, including and especially Germany, which is basically the economic engine of Europe, go under? How exactly does that work? And by the way, I asked that question to many people in the comments in that last video. Do you know how many Peter Zihan supporters responded to that particular point? None. Not one person responded to the point of, how is France gonna do well because of nuclear power and farmland when the rest of Europe has completely collapsed and Europe is fucked, but France is gonna do just fine. It'll be this beacon of hope and tranquility in this sea of chaos and destruction. How does that work? Please let me know in the comments how exactly that's going to work when all the countries around France are gonna collapse, but France will do just fine because of nuclear power and farmland especially considering the numerous other negative factors, which I won't even go into this video. I mean, the way France is managed, the welfare state, we can, we can go into a great detail about that off topic for this video, but you get my point. So another response that was very common among Peter Zihan supporters was actually not a response, but an ad hominem attack. And various people in that thread basically said, well, you're just jealous. You're just jealous of Peter Zihan, Caleb. That's why you're making this video. So I made a video and made some points about geopolitical economics, international trade, and they responded, well, you're just jealous. So obviously this is not an actual argument or response. This is an ad hominem attack to move the subject off of the points that I made in the last video. But enough Peter Zihan supporters said this because I guess that's what they do. So I will respond to that briefly. Uh, if I'm jealous of Peter Zihan, then what specifically about Peter Zihan as an individual am I jealous of? So Peter Zihan is a very successful geopolitical analyst. Do I have any desire to be a geopolitical analyst? No, I don't. I can't think of anything more boring that is absolutely not for me. So no, thank you. I vastly prefer what I do for a living. I run three different international companies. I have a great time doing those things. Uh, being a geopolitical analyst and sitting in front of spreadsheets all day, uh, I think I would die of boredom. So I'm not jealous of his career. So am I jealous of his fame? Well, if you already know who I am and know my content, you know that I don't like being well-known. Being famous is the last thing I want. I'm an introvert and I actually find it irritating that I even have to be famous to a degree on the internet. When people actually come up to you in public and say, oh my God, Caleb Jones. I mean, I, I'm flattered, I, I appreciate it, but I don't like it. I'm an introvert, I don't like this stuff. The last thing I want is to be famous. So hell no, I don't want to be famous at all. I just want the money. I want to make as much money as I can by being as least famous as possible. So am I jealous of Peter Zihan's income? Well, uh, I don't know if you knew this, but I make a seven figure income. If you add up all my income sources, all my companies, all my income streams, that's about what I make. Moreover, because I don't live in the collapsing Western world, I pay legally about four or 5% in total taxes on all of my annual income, unlike the typical American, which is paying 40, 50, or 60%. So does Peter Zihan, with all of his expenses and overhead, net, net income, a seven-figure income? I mean, maybe it's possible, maybe he does. But if he makes more money than me, he probably doesn't make a lot more. And more importantly, I guarantee you, he is not paying 4% or 5% on his income like I am. He's paying 30, 40, or 50% like the good little American he is. So if I'm not jealous of his career, if I'm not jealous of his fame, if I'm not jealous of his income, what exactly am I jealous of? If that is your contention that I'm just jealous of Peter Zihan, then go ahead and put in the comments what you think I'm jealous of if I'm not jealous of those three things. And it could just be that you're being defensive as a Zihan supporter. And so when I state my disagreements with Peter Zihan, instead of discussing those disagreements, you make it personal by saying that I'm jealous when clearly I just disagree with him. The next response that people said, several people said this, and they said, Caleb, you're just making this video because of clickbait. You're just making this video to get traffic to your YouTube channel. Well, no shit. Correct. That is why I do all of my YouTube videos. 
That is why most people, if not everyone on YouTube, makes YouTube videos. As I have said many times over the past 15 years, I am a business owner running an online e-commerce business here. My goal in making YouTube videos is to get as many clicks as possible, to get as many followers as possible, so that a percentage of those people will purchase my online courses and online coaching programs, which are very, very good. That is my bias. That's why I'm here. I mean, that's like someone starting a business and you go to that person and you say, you're just trying to make money. Uh, yeah, dumb shit, that is exactly the goal here. <laughs> Now, isn't that nice what I just did? Isn't it cool that I just came out and told you, and I've said this hundreds of times, if not thousands of times, those of you who follow my content for a long time, I've said my goal here as a business owner is to vacuum as much money out of your wallet into my wallet. That's why I'm doing these YouTube videos, including this video, including the last video, including all of my videos. Now, isn't that refreshing to see a guy actually state his bias in advance? to state his financial motivations in advance. I just told you why I'm doing YouTube videos, and now at that context, you can more properly evaluate the things that I say, whether you believe what I say or don't like what I say. Wouldn't that be cool if other people did that, like maybe Peter Zayan, wouldn't that be nice? You see my point? If I did it, why can't he? The last response that I saw was that many other analysts agree with Peter Zayan, therefore he's right. Okay, not an argument. I could do a video, I'm not going to, but I could do a video within you know an hour or two of research. I could come up with the name, I know three or four off the top of my head, but I could come up with the names of 25 very intelligent, very experienced, very smart analysts who completely and totally disagree with Peter Zihan. Does that mean Peter Zihan is wrong? No. I mean, one of the people would be Ray Dalio. Ray Dalio disagrees with Peter Zihan. Uh, Ray Dalio made $22 million. Is he stupid too? Is he an idiot? Is he a clown? It doesn't matter if people agree or disagree. There are lots of people who agree with me that Peter Zihan is completely wrong. Does that make me right or does that make me wrong? No, it has nothing to do with it. I'm sorry, that is not an argument. I wanna end here with a comment on the last video that I think sums up the attitude of most of the people in that video who are responding negatively. The vast majority of those people were reacting they were not making constructive, objective arguments. They were reacting emotionally. And this comment sums it up. I'll put it right here. And this is it. So you're the guy that loves smearing the developed world? No, I live in the developed world. I live in Dubai. I'm smearing the Western world because the Western world is going to collapse in our lifetimes. And saying people should live in shitholes. Uh, no, I don't live in a shithole. While living in an authoritarian theocracy, I have more personal day-to-day -day freedom living in Dubai than I live in the United States. I've talked about that before in my videos that builds huge skyscrapers with no plumbing in the desert just to show off. Uh, no, I moved there to save money on taxes, not to show off. I don't care what you think about me. I really don't like you. The future you paint is revolting and horrifying to me, a true nightmare scenario, a collapsed West, a powerful China. The world might as well be over. Then there will be nothing left in my eyes. If the really happens, I'll say if that really happens, which I don't think it will, I'll just become a survivalist hermit in the forests of Maine or northern Michigan in hopes of eventually contributing to the rebuilding of the Great West. I absolutely love Peter Zihan, and I abhor you so you can imagine whether I was convinced. Now, if you're an objective third-party observer where you don't really know who I am and you don't really know who Peter Zihan is or you don't really care, look at that comment. Is that person reacting with emotions or with analysis? Is that person involved in pure emotionalism or is that person being rational and objective? Is that person actually constructing real arguments or is that person reacting emotionally? And that's the vast majority of people who responded in that video, which is perfectly fine. I'm very happy with the subscribers I got in that video. Just remember, whenever you see discourse on the internet, because this is what I do, I look for objective, rational, fact-based arguments, and I tend to filter out and ignore reactivity, anger, emotionalism, and name-calling, because you can never change someone's mind, at least not my mind, with emotions and anger, but you can change my mind, or at least have a shot at changing my mind, with facts, objective data, and well-reasoned arguments. So those are all the arguments that I saw in that last thread, and watch carefully the comments in this video to see if anyone repeats the same points that I already addressed. That would mean they haven't watched the video, or they're just reacting emotionally. And again, I will repeat, 
If you wanna leave a personal attack on this video, you are more than welcome to do it. Just be aware that very likely no one will be able to see your comment except for you. If you disagree with any of my analysis, please let me know in the comments. And if you, as long as you don't make a personal attack, I will respond to you and I will have an adult back and forth conversation based on the arguments and the data. And if you disagree with me, that is perfectly fine. At least you know my biases unlike Peter Zihan, who doesn't disclose them publicly. And lastly, I will say, I like, for the third or fourth time now, I like Peter Zihan, I think he's a smart guy, I think he's a good person. I also think a lot of his analysis is very weird and doesn't make any sense. Some of it I like, some of it I don't, and that's the internet. If you wanna watch the original video I did on Peter Zihan where all this started, you can watch that video right now, and I'll see you in that video, bye.